So recently, I just finished reading this book. It's called Forbidden Colors by Yuki Yamishima. It's the third book of his that I've read. I've read Confessions of a Mask as well as Thirst for Love. And for those who aren't familiar with him, Mishima is one of the 20th century's most controversial and influential Japanese authors. And he died in his mid-40s from committing seppuku. Uh, it's a long story, but he was like a kind of like a national, right-wing nationalist um, figure. But, you know, <laughs> this is a novel about love and beauty so it is about two things love and beauty one is and their interrelation with one another one of the characters is named yuichi his name is yuichi he uh is 19 or 20 when the book starts and he is described as the epitome of perhaps a greek you know just beauty he is a young spry handsome uh, man who uh, everyone in the book, whenever they see him, they essentially fall uh, fall into like an, an entrancement. Entrancement is not even a word, but you know they forget, they get entranced by his beauty, and they long to own him. They long to be with him. They long to have sex with him. They long to just have him in their lives. This man is a young um, and not. Uh, as not really sexually um, active at the beginning of the book, but he ends up, you know, becoming that as the book progresses. But the he is finding out that he is actually uh, more attracted to men than women. And that, as well as that he seems to have an incapacity, he seems to be incapable of forming longing romantic love or just love in general with the people, or with the men and women that he ends up kind of being involved with he finds it difficult to love. And it's not necessarily something that he contemplates in the novel. It is not something, it is not a novel where he struggles about not being able to love someone, so he tries to find someone who can who he can actually love and be with. That's not what the book's about. The book is about someone who realizes it and accepts that he cannot love people. And he kind of just carries this uh, and drags it around in his life. Uh, and just goes on and tries to figure out how to kind of deal with it. He doesn't try to fix it, he just tries to deal with it. And then there's another man, Yuichi. Shuichi is an older man who has gone through, he's a novelist, he's gone through many things in his life, and he's come to the realization at this point that he also cannot love. He does not want to love, he doesn't like, he pretty much despises women um, because of perhaps, partly because of what they have done within his life, he finds that, you know, they just... Uh, perhaps they're duplicitous and they don't love anyone and they just want whatever. But he hates women and he hates the effect that women has had in his life, so he tries to enact revenge on women by getting Yuichi, the younger man, to... Um, by introducing Yuichi into their lives. Because he knows for sure that they will fall in love with Yuichi and Yuichi will break their hearts because he cannot love. So he... Uh, it's in the process of him kind of introducing his form, his former lovers former female lovers to Yuichi, who not only cannot love, but also just doesn't like women. But they fall in love with him, and it goes in cycles of just pain and suffering for the women and for the men and who fall in love with him as well. Uh, and the book is kind of about two things. It's about love and beauty, love and the capability of love, whether love is actually a, perhaps a real thing, whether love can actually be given to someone or can actually, can actually be felt. Is love something that is inherently... Do some people just love, some people can't love? You know, what is beauty? Is beauty a curse? The idea of beauty being a curse is a big thing of the novel because Yuichi is young and beautiful and everyone falls in love with him, but that level of beauty creates everyone. Everyone kind of looks at him as a, perhaps as an object. It objectifies him to some degree. And that um, makes him, I guess, it, it, it lessens his humanity, I think. And the way he relates with other people is through the lens of them wanting to kind of fuck him, essentially. And, you know, he... Uh, just ends up treating other people the same way that they treat him. And in that sense, he just has a difficulty cr forming relationships with other people around him, and he gets into all these sorts of affairs and all that stuff. It's a really good book because it deals with... It's it's really what differentiates Mishima's writing from others, I think, is the way he's able to psychologize characters in a way that is so in-depth uh, and just so revelatory. Many novels ha can have lurid plots and uh, t 
twists and all of that stuff. It's easy to make pl a plot with a twist. What's difficult is to get under the skin of all the characters and make them so real that they permeate your dreams and your waking thoughts, you know. It's to read someone is to meet someone. And the way, when you're reading this book, you are able, I, I find that you are able to get such an interesting look into how Mishum looks at the world, perhaps, or at least how he tries to make sense of the world by looking at the world through different characters. And, you know, I just really enjoyed the book. He writes so vividly, so um, movingly, and despite its very sociopathic tendencies. But I, I'm just re I really like reading his books, and I'm very looking forward. I'm looking forward very much to reading the rest of his kind of bibliography. So yeah, that's Forbidden Colors, Yukio Mishima. Uh, uh, I really liked it. I think you would enjoy it. I think it's well in line with the books I've been reading recently. For example, I read Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. You know, it's really in line with these these very deep psychological examinations of humanity and human beings, and um, yeah, it's it's a great book.